uh, just going to do a tutorial on um, some car sketching. Um, I just I was doing this feedback for someone, and I uh, just thought, well, I'll actually turn this into a video rather than. So anyway, um, I've done a few lines here, as you can see, and uh, this is going to be some form of coupe slash sedan. And for this, um, I was trying to create a dynamic view for an automotive sketch. And I'm just going to carry on doing this sketch um, as a, a demo, really. So you've probably picked up on I've not drawn any wheels yet. Um, Sometimes, well, normally. I start with wheels, I always do the wheels first. But what I'm trying to do at the minute is not worry about the wheels and create something form wise that isn't necessarily standard. As, um, I think I find it, it's too easy to um, do a form that's typical um, automotive or product. So I generally try to now do a few random lines and um, see what I can create without worrying too much about it being automotive. Um, I'm just playing around with the forms. So I've got these two key lines here, this, the bottom of the car and the shoulder. And I'm just trying to do the nice clean long strokes. Uh, so it's kind of got this arcing going to it and the perspective is going something like this. So if I was sketching some spokes, my default, don't bother doing the wheel, just do the spokes. Then the next set of spokes is going to be somewhere around here. And I'm now going to think about what I want to do form wise on this side. So I kind of did these headlights, which are quite thin and tapered trape trapezoids, and I've done this almost like a, a layered slice into it. So imagine how so this form's doing this and there's a, a little flare on here maybe um, or I could think about maybe rather than doing that maybe yeah uh, carry some volume into here and maybe do the same thing as an air outlet maybe Um, or even rather than kicking it back in and making it an air intake, make it a layered panel maybe. So maybe I want this to do that maybe. So and the benefit of doing this sort of thing, just playing around with these, is you you create an aesthetic that's kind of unique. I think as soon as you think, oh, I'm going to do a typical car intake, it, it starts to look more like a typical automotive form. And that's what I'm trying to break away from here in this demo. So I'm going to suggest that maybe this panel kicks out a little bit. And there's a bit of volume in here. That's kind of continuous through here. Maybe I'm going to dip that down at the end then we kind of have that all as one pure form maybe but then because this is a layer above the base one maybe because of this direction I'm going to end up with something like this catching a highlight so maybe the cross section through here is doing something like that maybe Maybe it's a little blend between the two. Get a nice crease. 
and then that will give you in that edge there an outtake. So already you've got something. It might look unusual. It might look a bit weird, but it's more just an experiment and um, trying to create something different rather than sticking to the norms and the normal rules. So maybe I'm going to carry this on like so. Okay, so I've kind of created something quite uh, unusual, but we'll go with that for now. And I'm just going to start by blocking in some um, some colour, just real quick. Um, let's use my like, default brightness. So I'll do a base layer, and then I'll pop some shadow in. Just to emphasize this split. Soften that out. And just build it up nicely. Right there. A harsh, harsh eraser. Do work to that line. And now I'll turn it upside down because to do an arc this way, I'm moving my whole arm. So it's easier for me to arc that way with my left arm than it is to arc this way. Um, because I'm going to move my arm backwards and forwards and across to do that, whereas I can just rotate from the elbow to do that. So if I'm doing this sort of line, it's more comfortable and easier to draw without planting hand and just move from the elbow across the page. And soft foot razor now, just soften that up. Tone and shadow on the top of the shoulder. Not too much, but just for contrast reasons. Some nice long strokes, nice and clean. Center line. Oh, it's all. And I'm just going to get a soft eraser and I'm just going to raise the top, soften it all off. Then I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. And then I'm going to black out the headlights, make them inset into the bodywork. And let me just erase that. Nice and quick, just start to show off what these buttons are doing. And I rotate it upside down again because I'm doing this arc this direction. And I'm just gonna I've got a darker area there just to emphasize that there's more of a gap between the two panels. And that's just a nice clean line. And then I'm going to do this bit here, just a mid tone. Then the same thing, I'm just going to have a nice clean line. Just 
smooth that up. Soft the rays on this side. So just so there's a nice mid-tone gradient going on there. It's barely noticeable. And there I'm gonna get a white. I'm literally just gonna put in the highlight down here, really bright red here. Quite bright down here as well. And this will be the first of the many white layers to kind of build this up gradually. Uh, like I say, I'm just gonna see that bottom one because I'm gonna turn it upside down. Nice clean line, there we go. So I tried to do it all in one stroke and then to give the effect of a reflection of this edge here, just gonna erase the white bit with a harsh eraser as if it's the light's bending over the form. And then it's gonna taper away to give the impression of the gap between the two layered panels is tapering or is getting bigger and smaller. So again, similar sort of thing here, it's gonna taper in towards the top. And then it's gonna taper out this way as well. To be more in line with that shadow we did earlier. And I've got a harsh rise of the top edge. And then I'm just going to zoom in, and then what I'm going to do is going to ray it that off so it's nice and soft. Okay, and also I'm going to put a harsh line on there as well. No, what I'm going to do now is just soften that up. So I'm going to soften that one up. Turn it down a little bit. And then again, get the airbrush and some harsh highlights on there. The same thing again. Again, just going to wipe that off. Gonna soften this off as well. And again, it's gonna be a harsh. Okay, um, so now to put those highlights in, and because there's a soft white, then a harsh white gives the impression of um. A reflection and you want to build this up in various number of layers to get a nice full effect. Now I'm going to concentrate on doing um, some kind of highlight into the body side of the, uh, not sorry, into the wheel arch from the body side. And I'm just going to just a general horizon line. And I'm just going to have it subtly bend very subtly. Whoops, not quite precise enough. There we go. See a nice, long, clean stroke of the pen. Um, some people often ask me what I'm using. I'm using a. Um, a Wacom Intress 
Pro, the new one. And it's a large, so it's probably work area is probably in a little bit bigger than a four piece of paper. Just so you all know what I'm using. Okay, so once I've put that harsh line in, I'm just going to soften it off with the soft eraser. Very lightly doing it now. Uh, so what you what you effectively end up with is a hot spot, and it will gradually fade out. As you can see, that's starting to happen now. So I'm also going to just then turn that down, so you can barely see it. And basically, it's just creating the mid tones, and then. I'm going to do a similar sort of thing again, but I'm not going to do such as a large area. So we are nice and soft. Get a harsh eraser. Again, just stroke that top crease on that shoulder, that front wing. There we go, we just erase around it where it needs to be erased. But this time, rather than using the harsh. I'm going to do the soft and subtle. Then I'm going to do one more layer. But this one I'm going to turn down a little bit. And then this layer is going to be the hot spot. Around the top of the front wing. Same principle, I'm just going to harsh erase the top to give you the crease. And then I'm just going to harsh erase some form of elliptical shape. And if you've ever used any, any, any kind of rendering package, as in like Keyshot or Bunk Speed or Showcase, and they come with um, what's called a HDRI dome. You, you'll notice when you do your key shot renderings, you end up with reflections in the bodywork. And so this that is basically imagining that you're reflecting a light panel or a light source, similar to that you see in these HDRIs. That is a reflection of something that's white hanging off the ceiling somewhere, emitting light. So I'm also just going to soften the top up. Uh, the bottom of it off just a little bit, so not very much. And then over the top of all this, I'm now going to do the wheel arch. So I'm going to press E to get the ellipse tool up. And then I'm just going to scale that down. And then I'm going to check the perspective, make it more elliptical, scale it down. Basically, eyeball it so it looks like it will fit the spoke seam. And bear in mind this distance here at the top of the wheel arch to this point here, just the proportions and position. So, does that give me enough ground clearance? Is it too much ground clearance? Possibly. Play around with that one. It's really buggy. Okay, so now I'm going to um, I'm going to black that in now. So hold B on the keyboard and just increase the size on the brush. So it's going a lot of thick line to work to. But what I could do is if I do that as a grey and it's as big as I can go. If I do that in grey and then I'm just gonna do another Line slightly bigger by increasing the ellipse. So 
is basically just creating the flat spot on the edge of the wheel arch. You don't have to have the flat spot for this. Um, it's basically designed really. Um, I'm going to lock the pixels on that so that it ended up white. And by locking the pixels, I'm just going to just draw some white on the top of that just to show there's a bit of um, a bit of grey and a grey at the bottom. And I'm going to use that to um, either the, at some point to work to, because so, now I'm going to just black in this area. Which is going to be the wheel well. But I'm then just going to freehand this because I've got the flat spot to use as a kind of tolerance. And I'm just going to raise all that. Bear, bear in mind, I've got the I've got the um, part where the panel ends. Uh, which one of the transparency blocks? Right. In there. I'm just going to soften this up. And that gives me the wheel arch. I'm going to get the ellipse tool again. This time. And just going to scale it. Down a little bit. And this time I'm going to go a bright white and I'm going to create the edge of the rim. Soften off the bottom. And then I'll do that spot in there. And that gives me. I'm not going to be rendering the second wheel, so I'll just do my default wheel. Give you an idea, I and mean, you can go away and spend a couple of hours on your wheels and uploading things like that. But the center of the wheels about here somewhere, if they're dished, which I always do dished wheels, just because they look cool. So just by curving the spokes, I can show there's a bit of a dish on the spokes, a concave or convex, depending on your perspective of where you're looking at it. Or I might just throw on some kind of highlights. Gray. I'm just lightly blocking some colour for the spokes. 
Let's get a soft eraser and then I'm just going to tie that down. So that's the wheels sort of done. What I could do actually is if you get the ellipse tool and just pop on the, the tire wall, catching some light so when the tire wall rolls into the actual tire tread you can get soft areas uh, soft airbrush do it in white so you can always just tie it down so just do something along those lines and just fade it out Just so it gives the impression there's a tire there. And so now I'm going to move on to just tining up this, this bottom edge here. So I want just like a really defined black line. Just so that it's clear as to what so there's a, a gap between them two. And I'm gonna have to say join between the two and then there, so let's just tighten this side up because you can see it's not very tight here. Pretty all over the place. And put it under there. Okay, I'm going to do a that's my other day. Right, and then we'll just uh, define that bottom edge of the car. Let's soft eraser it out. Put some kind of surface in here. Just a bit of form. Just so it's not so flat. And then I'll get in some kind of contrast to the other side of the shoulder for wing. It's just to show that there's a change in the surface more than anything else. It's just an artist that lies in sort of thing. So it's just a hint at the bonnet. So I'll just put a highlight and some kind of power bulge. And I'm just going to erase that, that um, harsh line for the uh, wing before soft erasing back from the front wing. So it's going to be a change in the surface sort of thing, just a nice gradient. And it gives you the impression there's a power bulge of some form going into the A pillar. And then I'm just going to pop a, a few highlights in here just to show there's a bit of form above this vent, it's not flat. So, harsh erase to the edge. And then once I've harsh erased that, I'm going to play around with how far what this surface is doing here and what it does to get to here. So, I might say that. There's a flat spot just underneath the headlights, so like kind of an eyebrow. And then I might literally just soften that off. Maybe do a harsh highlight. Can you add 
quick search off here before we do some soft erasing on that and then generally do the same down here it's just to show there's a there is something going on the surface it's not just a, a bland boring shape sort of thing feel free to experiment with this you know trying things the whole point of design is to create something new so experiment and I'm just going to turn that down because it's a bit too much but I'm just going to put a nice highlight on the edge of that It's the same thing as the top of the, of the notch slash front wing. It's the impression I'm giving it is it's reflecting something that's in the environment. Like, yeah, it just literally, say if it's a square panel, for example, it bends over the surface to where it's facing it directly. And then I'm just going to soften the top edge off. It just gives the impression there's a bit of form going on in there. I might even get a grey. I just maybe suggested there is an eyebrow on some form just to a bit of contrast. But it's the underside. So the surface bends in and then back out to this edge. So then maybe to counter that as well again, just get a right just put a highlighter on here and again it's just reflecting the environment and just a tight to where the headlight should be and I'm kind of losing the way here that's, that's better. Maybe this is tapered. I'm just going to soften that. Then maybe I'll get a small pen. We'll just literally do specular highlight running the, along the, the edge of that crease and then we'll fade that out. Fade it out from this way. And these are all the sort of things you can um, you can do so you can throw in a soft for the headlights soften it off a bit so it's a bit of a glow do the same thing as we just did with that highlight on that edge and just throw in a really harsh white against the soft On top of that, get an airbrush and effectively create a glow. And that should run. The same here. Turn it down slightly. And then, say, let's do. An indicator of some form, maybe popping in this little corner here. Let's do it 
nice and harsh so that's the strip of LEDs and then do a soft airbrush to show the glow but then erase to the bodywork panel because light doesn't bend around corners Let's say, let's just throw in a bit of shadow for this grill. And I'm just going to realize that that body panel is quite clear. soften off this side. So you can get the idea up quickly just throw on the base of the windscreen. So the same principles as the white, but I'm doing it in the black. So soft and then harsh, contrast and tone. Harsh lines to say there's a reflection going on there, but then soften it off slightly. And you might even throw a white to show looking through the glass and through the apron and the dashboard. And then just soften off from this side. And it just gives you the impression you can see the apron on the other side. And then, if you look at cars closely, the glass never sits perfectly into the pillar because of door seals and where the bonnet has a gap and because of wing, uh, the wiper blades for your windshield. So they're quite often tapered, leading towards the bonnet. Throwing a harsh line at the base of the windscreen. And just keep going through the process and keep going over and doing the same sort of, sort of things to show your forms and your surfacing. Same sort of process. So you could say, okay, pop a highlight down here maybe. Leave it quite light and faded out so it's more of a mid-tone than a harsh highlight. Same process, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And just create some mid-tone. You could do the whole thing and just keep working through it. And then if once you've finished it, for example, you could pick a colour. Pick something unusual like purple or something. And then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an overlay. Change the layer blend mode to and then because you've done it as a grayscale, all the shadows and your highlights are picked up through. You could do it as a bit dodge, linear dodge, screen.
screen. Don't be afraid to um, play around with these and just see what kind of effect you're looking for. Um, but also you can play around with the, the opacity of the layout with something else on to get a given effect. So play around with that. Then if you have to do things like run the wheel arch just to raise that back out roughly. Doesn't have to be as precise. Depending on what artistic style you're going for. Um, yeah. Well, it's basics, so I'll leave it with that for now. Cheers.